And on this week's edition of the Sports Lunatics, we are going to talk about how Alexander Ovechkin made a comment to the Athletics' Rob Rossi in terms of how he and Sidney Crosby have saved the NHL. And Howie, uh, when I heard the comment, and uh, I, I was I was fascinated by it, just because at that time we had just started the NHL Network Radio on XM Radio, which is now Sirius XM NHL Radio, and uh, it, it was interesting because I remember the excitement and the anticipation of both of those superstars coming into the NHL. And we had just got through a work stoppage and, you know, the game at that time, a lot of people were wondering what direction it was going to go in. Was it going to be, you know, because we had had multiple work stoppages in the national hockey league, it was looked upon, especially with a a lot of people in the United States as a fourth sister to the other pro leagues. And, you know, it was not really having much momentum in certain markets. Um, but then, of course, Alexander Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby come into the NHL a year apart, and the rest, as they say, is history. Well, you but I'm just Europe- curious what you thought of Ovechkin's comments in terms of saving the National Hockey League. I'm of two minds, really, on that statement. I loved it. I love the statement because I love how it puts it puts him and it puts Crosby into the spotlight uh, and, and makes people look at the game, not only today, but as it was coming out of that work stoppage. You know, that work stoppage, yes, you, we've had other work stoppages in the NHL before, but that work stoppage was a little bit different. Ovechkin had been drafted uh number one coming into the 20 or 2004 draft unfortunately there was no season so he stayed in russia and he played for moscow dinamo now he was a massive kid but he started playing with dynamo at 16 years old started playing in that in that russian uh, league it wasn't the khl yet but you know he was still playing with men he came over Uh, Crosby had been drafted number one in 2005. And this was the first time that the NHL ever really marketed players the way they marketed Crosby and Ovechkin. The other thing they did coming out of this work stoppage was they asked or told the referees, we are going to start calling the rule book as it's written. And as a result, It took a while for players to get used to the new interpretations of the rules. I'll use that word. But that really opened things up. And so, yes, the the marketing of Crosby and Ovechkin gave the league a new profile and it, it, it helped kind of catapult them into what I think is kind of the new NHL. As far as saving the league, I don't know about that. I'm going to give you a name that a lot of people forget just because of the team he's affiliated with now. But during that work stoppage, I would argue Brendan Shanahan had a lot to do with how the new NHL looked coming out of that work stoppage because he was the one that raised the flag and said, guys, we need to change the way the sport is played. It's becoming too mucky. It's become boring. It's become predictable. It was like if you had a one or two goal lead, you'd win the game. It was not an exciting product. Um, you know, you had a lot of older players in the National Hockey League at that time as well. And they did. They held a sort of, a, you know, an experimental type of uh gathering of players executives to essentially what can we do to to change the game and make it more exciting what rules can we implement whether it's equipment changes whether it's you know the style of play uh you know uh they experimented everything and a lot of these adaptations to the rules 
later on, especially obstruction and whatnot, changed uh, when the new NHL, I call it the new NHL, uh, you know, started playing again in 2005. I'm not saying he was the sole person to, but I, I think he was the one that really pushed the the NHL into a direction of a better product and then Crosby and Ovechkin just coincidentally were the two to really take it to a new level that we had not seen in many, many years. Excellent point. That's an excellent point. Uh, and it's something that needs to be, I think, highlighted. What happened to when – you remember when coming into that season, they said we're going to call, call penalties the way that they're supposed to be called on dump-ins. You had one defenseman go back to get the puck and the other defenseman would hold up whoever was coming to get the guy. That was not allowed anymore. And you had guys getting pasted into the boards at the far end. You know, you had guys water skiing off of other guys that had a step on them and that had always been allowed. And I think back to probably what was the zenith of that, that, that kind of obstruction period, 1995, when the Devils won the Stanley Cup. And uh, the way that the Devils played the, the uh, uh, you know, the neutral zone trap, the left wing lock, whatever you want to call it, and uh, how they just, they just tied up everybody in the neutral zone. They tied up, the, you know, nobody could get through anywhere. And it's exactly what, what you were saying that Brendan Shanahan had said. The game, the game had lost any of its flow. The game had lost any of its, of its beauty. And uh, in order to get people to, not necessarily come back to the game, but in order to make them, you know, feel that the game was great again. I hate that saying, but anyway, uh, you know, they had to do something. And this reinterpretation or proper interpretation of the rules was probably exactly what they needed. Well, I remember they, there was a big debate about should they go to bigger nets because the goaltending were the goaltenders were getting bigger. But part of that was the equipment that they were wearing that a lot of guys were, were, you know, using their modifications to make their equipment larger. It wasn't really enforced as heavily, uh, you know, in, in that dead puck era as it was after that they put in new restrictions. They even hired Kay Whitmore, former NHL goaltender, to sort of, he was, he was the person in charge of looking over that new, you know, rule change, you know, the rule changes with the equipment for the goaltenders, you know, because there was no space to score. It was just, it was such a defensive uh, minded game. And I know at that time too, Howie, and, and you may agree or disagree, coaches were playing to keep the puck out of the net. They weren't playing the game to score. Uh, it just felt like, you know, with the increased pressures, of of that job you know there was not a shelf life uh as long as previous coaches had um you know it was like if you didn't turn a club around within two years maybe three years you're done and and it really changed the philosophy i found where there were so many defensive minded coaches there weren't really any offensive gurus out there that would open up the game and you saw it in the point totals. You go through uh, many years in that dead puck era, there were not a lot of 100-point uh, scores. Uh, there were not a lot of 50-goal scores. And then when the rules changed in 2005, 2006, it just seemed like a whole new world opened up. And and Gretzky and Ove uh, – sorry, not Gretzky, but Ovechkin and Crosby uh, were the two leading forces – uh, sort of, as you said, that they were young, they were youthful, there was this excitement, there were all these bird magic comparisons for hockey. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more, uh, just in terms of they brought a renewed excitement into the game that we had not seen. You know, we had had young, great players come into the National Hockey League, but they weren't in the same division. Gretzky and Lemieux were not in the same division. They were in the different conferences, and they hardly played against each other. Now you had two young, phenomenal stars 
who had all this international cred coming into the National Hockey League through the World Juniors. At least we got to see it in Canada. Um, that you know we were salivating. I remember we were working, and that was that was our programming was around these two guys and what could happen uh, at that time. And it was a fun time to be in broadcasting, knowing you know following this sport of what's ahead. And it was great. We loved it. We ate it up, and uh, and people loved it too. The fans were enjoying it. And it had a new rivalry to it. It it was like a, uh, you know, somebody shot a new injection of life into the league, and it was it was awesome to be around. 